I know that many of you have come title, and the title is not misleading. And I assure you, if you pay attention, you will understand the angle. Now, you're going to have to do a little bit more research. You're going to have to understand the principle behind it. Pay attention to what I just said. You're going to have to understand the principle behind it because when you're going into anybody's court, you're dealing with principles of law and not statute. Did, did you hear me? That's what maxims of law are. They are principles. So let me tell you the question that I had in mind while having a conversation with someone and getting ready to hang up the phone, and we had a consult on Monday. At that consult on Monday with this individual, or what? no, it was Wednesday. Sorry, it wasn't Monday. It was Wednesday. Um, two days ago. Sorry, it's, it really has been a long, trialsome month of October. Things have finally settled down to where I can take a breath. I'm renting a backhoe. The backhoe will be delivered on Monday. I will dig the hole, the major hole. That's the most important thing. That will be the first thing that's dug is that hole for the tank to go in. I'm not worried about refilling it because I can take all winter if I want to refill that hole. Okay? What I am concerned about is getting that hole dug before winter comes. Okay? That's important. Important to me. And then there's another line that I have to dig, the water line coming from the water tank. And so... I've already shoveled it out, and I've dug it as deep as I need it to be, but I'm going to double the depth so that I don't have a freezing issue. You follow me? You feel me? Okay. So let's go ahead and get off into this. At the end of the conversation with the young man, I told the young man, I said, Mr. Well, I ain't going to say his name because he, he'll get a big head if I say his name. I said, tax credit. <laughs> Just to think, you should probably be able to use tax credit to pay bail if you got arrested. Now, it wasn't exactly in those words, but that was the thinking, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how can you use tax credit to pay your bail should a judge impose bail upon you? We all know that there is no money. We all know that legal tender can only be used for paying debt. But we know this, right? Putting up your home as collateral is not the same as putting up bona fide collateral, property that you own. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people who are going to hear this video, and they're going to immediately start creating phantom tax credits. Let them do what they do, as stupid as they want to be. As I told all of you, I'll say it again. In order for you to have bona fide tax credits, you must document the tax credits. You must understand, this is all SACOM is working on right now, is documenting the tax credits so that we can transfer the tax credits. We already told you that tax credits are transferable. The very same transferable tax credits can be transferred to be utilized as a bond some people are going to create, as you're going to find out, tax credit bonds. Now, look, you're going to learn something. So you just need to sit back and pay attention. Now, there are those of you who have never watched one of my videos before and some of you who don't like the style in which the videos are presented. Now, for those of you who have never watched one of my videos before, you're in for a treat. And for those of you who don't like the style of my videos, Frankincense, you, your mama, and that horse she looks like, okay? Because I don't care. Your opinion of my channel ain't sanctioned, ain't solicited, ain't requested, ain't required, and ain't my concern. The only problem is 
you're going to listen to the information and siphon out of it what you can, and then you're going to move on. The only problem, and all the people, my people, they know that if you stay to the end, that's where you get the meat. Oops. Yeah, I know many people just only listen to the first five to seven minutes, and they think, no, this ain't that type of site. You see, I'm not getting paid for this. And as I told my people, I'm running out of energy, and pretty soon I will not have the energy or the stamina to do this work right here. I'm going to do this for some of you so that you will know, and then we're going to get off into the conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, I had a therapist come to my home today. That's the first person who's been inside my home besides the person who helped me move here. Ladies and gentlemen, there was embarrassment. Why? Because it's taken me all week, and I still haven't started cleaning up. Now, again, there was not trash everywhere. Please understand that. It's just all of the boxes and things that have been accumulating over the months. Well, I've been going through them and emptying them, and stuff is just sitting there. And I haven't organized it, and I haven't put things away like I'm supposed to. And I, I started to. i gotten halfway, and then this week came, and then I had the solar problem. And when I had the solar problem, I had to do all of this extra cutting and moving and charging. And now the solar system is charging pretty good. I am at 27.5 volts in my battery. Not to mention the solar is fully connected. I am not using any battery power. The battery is charging. Okay, it's a 29-volt battery, and I'm trying to get it fully charged, and the settings on it gives me 80% efficiency for the battery life, which is said to last me for 10-plus years. Just one battery. Ten years! Okay, heavy-duty battery cost me $1,500 for that battery, ladies and gentlemen, because I ain't no joke. Would I do it again? No. I would actually get a bigger battery so that I could have longer life. The only problem is you get a bigger battery, you have to buy a bigger inverter that can handle the bigger capacity. I had given away a solar panel yesterday. That's right. I gave away a solar panel yesterday. Do you know why I gave away a solar panel yesterday? Because I technically I have two solar panels too many. It's too much energy coming in. I literally, technically, honestly, I had six solar panels too many. I'm running only four solar panels right now. There's a total of nine out there. I had ten. Gave away one yesterday. I have another MPP, MTTP charge controller. Try saying that eight times thousand fast. <laughs> anyway. And that MPP, MTTP, or am I saying it backwards? Hold on. MPPT, sorry. Uh, the MPPT charge controller, the one I have is now it's a 60 amp. That's a 60 amp as opposed to the 80 amp because there's a $100 difference. I have an 80 amp. does me just fine. The 60 amp is going to go to the 100, uh, excuse me, not 100, but 12 volt battery. The other one is a 24-volt battery. So with the two different, pay attention, two different batteries, ladies and gentlemen, I should be able to maintain everything. The smaller battery will be for things like the cameras and all of that stuff, the computer during the day. And the bigger battery will be for when I need to use the chainsaw. Because <laughs> we're going to have a massacre. Uh, or need to use the heavier equipment such as the freezer and stuff like that. But I have more than enough energy to take care of my needs. And it it took a long time, ladies and gentlemen, but we're finally there. Well, I had the worker come in. We're only going to go for about another minute of me explaining this. I had the worker come in, and I was explaining to her how things are. And I was explaining to her that I've been trying to straighten this place up since Monday. But it's taking me longer and longer and longer. And I told her this is what I go through every single fall into, or summer into fall, winter into spring. Happens every year. But this time, the amount of fatigue is 
pretty much extreme. I can get around, I can move around, it's the only problem is I'm just exhausted. I really am tired. People say, you're not getting enough sleep. Look here, you ignorant mother... I don't need you to try to provide a medical diagnosis based on what I'm saying. You don't have the credentials, and I'm not giving you that permission, so shut the f*** up. Literally. I apologize. You ain't got to apologize. Just stay up out of my business. I'm not doing this for you to try to help me, to give me your remedy of what you think, because what you think is not important to me. Oh, that doesn't st- That sounds so cold. Why would you say that it doesn't? Um, you got that, that, I'm just trying. I don't give up what you're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Stop trying. Mind your own mother business. Worry about yourself. Leave me be. Whew. Finally got that out. I've been trying to tell that to people all this time, and I finally was able to just tell you exactly the way it is. There are some people who want to know this information, and so I'm revealing that information to them. When I say that I am definitely slowing down, this, what I'm experiencing now, is not what I experienced last year. And I've not experienced this before. The slowing down is completely different. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, I am wearing a vest. That's the zipper you're hearing in the background. It is 80 degrees in here, and I'm just wearing a vest. And this thing feels, and it's a heated vest. You know the kind of heated vest you guys use when you go skiing? Well, I ended up buying one of those because I like cold air. I honestly do like cold air. The only problem is I don't want to (laughs) freeze by liking cold air because I will walk around with a T-shirt on and it could be 20 degrees out. I used to ride around in New Mexico and New York and in Northern California with my windows down. Okay, and it would be 20 degrees outside because I like cold air. The only problem is cold air is not good for me because I can't sleep with my head uncovered during the winter. Okay, I will catch a cold in the quickest, especially during this COVID season. So I have the vest on and the vest was causing me to sweat. And it wasn't even on. I took the battery out some time ago, about an hour and a half ago. I just left the vest on. And had to take it completely off because it's too warm. That's been the other problem going from 40 degrees to 80. We're now 81 degrees. So this other, this cold, hot, and my body adjusting to the temperature, it's too much. And so I have a hard time dealing with that. So that plus the stress, plus the worrying about all of you, plus trying to get all of this stuff done. I had this information since Wednesday. And I've been wanting to do this video. I'm just too tired to do the video. So I'm doing it now. Well, why don't you just get started? You're just, you're just talking right now. I don't care if the music is mellow now. Just, just, just get started. Look, ladies and gentlemen, shut up. Now, let me go back and explain. Now we're going to start. 13 minutes, 45 seconds. 13 minutes, 45 seconds. That's what you need to key on to. Well, why don't you set up your YouTube channel? Don't worry about what I need and what I should and what I couldn't. Shut the up. Let me finish, all right? Oh, Mama, he's having a breakdown. Your mama's having a breakdown, Mama. He said you're having a breakdown. You having a breakdown, Mama? My mama says she ain't having no breakdown. Your mama is having a mother breakdown. She just don't want to admit it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's get started if we shall. I was talking to the young man, and I said, I made a statement to him, and then the first thing I said, hold on, i got to write this down. See, ladies and gentlemen, I have conversations with people, and things will come up. And he and I had a conversation, and I told him during that conversation, I can't remember what it was because that's the memory issue. But I told him, I never thought about it like this. I've never looked at it at this angle before, and then I showed him that the courts agree with what I was talking about. I said I had never thought about this angle before, and I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a consult. It wasn't something necessarily for for me to remember because that was information for him, not for you. You're going to hear a little beeping in the background because my battery is now charged at 28.6 volts. (laughs) It's uh, 2 o'clock. Sun's at getting direct sunlight, got all the voltage coming in there and the amps coming in there. 
So I got a full charge. And then tomorrow they'll do the same thing. So we're doing I. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, what I do remember is the end of our conversation. That's why I said I have to write this down. We're going to talk about court judgment where they order you to pay a fine. There you go. We're going to talk about courts ordering people to post bail. Pay attention. We're going to talk about mortgages where the bank has said you owe them money. Pay attention. We're going to talk about the right of offset because it's a common law right of offset. Again, pay attention. We're going to talk about your right to transfer these credits. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to tell you that if you did it right, you, not me, this I'm giving to you all for free. I could have held this on, could have created a new program in SACOM, could have made buku dollars off of people. That ain't what I'm trying to do. Because you all know by now those who are my people know that I'm not in this to take advantage of you. I promised I would put out information to help you people because my people helped me. And this is my doing an abundance of giving back to them. And I told you that it would get to the point to where it would take a lot out of me. Well, we're here, but let's get into it, shall we? 17 minutes, people. Let's talk. The first thing we're going to talk about is the court issuing a judgment. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people have a misconception of the court. They have a misconception of how things work in the court. So what I put in here is, watch watch the statement I put in. This is not the first statement I put in. I put in several because I wanted to prepare. Now, I haven't read anything other than the first one. That's why it's here. So what we put, tax credits were the security utilized for the court-ordered bond. Okay? And I, I'm going to do something else. Okay, uh, P O S T I N G of the quarter of the month. That's what I was supposed to put. So I apologize, y'all, that I didn't put that there. So we're going to have to do it this way. The other one was okay, but I'm not interested in the IRS portion of that uh, statement there. So we're going to do the court ordered bond thing. Okay, y'all don't mind? I don't mind. Mama, he said he don't mind. That mother mind, you know he mind. I done heard him talk about how he don't mind. Next thing you know, he going off on people. So, no, don't trust that mother when he say he don't mind. You know that mother. You know what? You and your mama, y'all need to go outside because y'all getting on my mother's nerves right now. And, yeah, I do mind. So, go get, I'm gone. Sorry. They weren't supposed to be here today. You know, they decided they wanted to come visit since I left that other person in here. And they wanted to come on in here and visit, too. In lieu of a security bond, it was provided that the taxes received by the taxpayer should be impounded by the clerk of the court. Why? Because they were using it as a security bond. Lord have mercy, somebody used their taxes to take care of a bond. The court restraining the collection from the taxpayer of the preceding processing taxes levied under the act, in respect to the products which it sold, in lieu of the security, ladies and gentlemen, in lieu of the bond, the security bond. When you post bond, that's exactly what you're doing. Okay? Now, look, this is interesting. I didn't know about this. January 6, 1936, the Supreme Court held that taxing provisions of the act unconstitutional. Look at that. So some stupid act was held unconstitutional. But we're not concerned about that, ladies and gentlemen. What did the court do? The court impounded the individual's tax credits because they were to receive a tax refund. Tax refunds are tax credits. They were to receive a tax credit, and they impounded the tax credit to take care of the security bond. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I hadn't looked this up before. I, I'm going to do a video eventually and tell you guys how this junk comes to me. 
I'm going to do a video, and I'm going to it to you from to finish. And those of you who appreciate it, you will listen. Those who don't, hey, again, frankincense you. Okay. During each of its appeals, this is the one that was on the other page, entered into a security agreement with the IRS, which permitted it to postpone the payment of disputed taxes by posting a security bond. We don't care about the security bond, okay? But you're going to be creating a security bond, some of you, not all of you. Pay attention. In a similar vein, lay admitted in its brief that a bond is and was the most common form of security posted to secure tax credits. Again, a bond is commonly and was prior the most common form of security to secure tax credits. Interesting, ain't it? You might want to go and look at this case, ladies and gentlemen, so that you'll understand a little bit more about tax credits. Okay? The district court acknowledged that the posting of collateral was a prerequisite for acquiring the tax credit. Interesting, huh? You know what? All they did was posted a bond. That's interesting, huh? The good thing that the Q pack and other items are bonds. Shh, don't tell nobody. I don't want nobody to get the wrong idea. The CD served as security for the bond. What is a CD? Anybody know what a CD is? It's a security, ladies and gentlemen. See? It it used to be called a CLD. Where where is that? See, certificate of deposit. But they just shortened it to CD. It's a financial instrument. The deposit is uh, this, whatever it is, Bank of Columbia deposited the bond proceeds at one bank, which issued a certificate of deposit in favor of the bondholder. The CD served as security. Interesting, ain't it? Like I said, there's so much information right here in front of you based upon the angle that I just gave you. Johnson Pledge! These assets to the court in lieu of the superseding bond. What I said, Johnson? Johnson desperated the proceeds of the note supported uh, incredible nature of his story. Between June 30th and 14th and 127th, he spent a total of $516.84 billion cents of the proceeds, including that his purchases were two boats. What did he purchase the boats for? He only spent $500. Why you mention the $500 if he's spending $31,000? So he pledged these assets, ladies and gentlemen, in lieu of posting a bond. <sighs> Amazing, ain't it? Hold on now. We ain't finished yet. In addition, all of Barnett's financial assets will be posted as security for the bond. Financial assets? Are you telling me that tax credits are financial assets? We'll talk about that in a moment. The purpose of the trust was to serve as security for the posting of the bail bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> pay attention. The corpus of the trust included 27 acres in controversy. The purpose of the trust was to serve as security for posting of the bonds. The trust required the signatures of at least two trustees for a valid conveyance of property from the trust, C.C. Divine, H.G. Divine, and A. Divine, were named as trustees. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody used a trust to post bonds. Imagine that, huh? Ooh, doggy. Oh, what's the name of the case? Hold on now. Y'all just, y'all jumping way too far ahead of me. That's 1983, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what the Attorney General has to say. The Circuit of Court, the, cir the circuit, circuit Court had issued all orders allowing the funds to be protected 
by the pledge of government bonds in lieu of the statutorily required surety bond. Statutorily required? Excuse me? So, ladies and gentlemen, you can create your own surety bond using the tax credit as security. Don't tell nobody. Now, I, I'm not going to go into detail how you do that. You need to do the research on how surety bonds are created. Look at the question I just gave you. How surety bonds are created. And you create your own surety bond. And you use your tax credit, your lawful tax credits that you have documented. There is a debt owed. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. However, a cash bond may be deposited in the registry of the court in lieu of a surety bond. The funds are held as a pledge as security for an obligation. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about what exactly is the equivalent of cash. According to the stipulation, a bond or cash would serve as security for TWA's payment of the judgment and interest. TWA, Trans World Airlines. Remember TWA? They went out of business. They don't exist anymore. TWA. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, TWA flight out of New York headed to Paris, the one that blew up in the sky. Yeah, that, that kind of led to their demise because nobody wanted to fly anymore. They blew up. They they claim it was because somebody had a cell phone. Yeah, somebody was using their cell phone while on the plane. Ladies and gentlemen, cell towers don't reach that high. They were over water. There were no cell towers. I'm in an area right now where the signal is horrible. Can't talk to nobody. Have to put my phone in one or two spots in order to get a full signal. Call drops all the time. Same thing on the plane. They didn't have transponders on planes for cell phone signal. They do now. They didn't have it before. Just thought I'd explain that to some of you. Ladies and gentlemen, can I use my tax credits to post bond? I want y'all to pay attention. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to hear me say pay attention quite often in this video. So pay attention. Tax-exempt bonds? Ah, we ain't worried about no tax-exempt bonds. Uh-oh. What is a tax credit bond? Oh, you got some tax credits? Can you put that and convert it to a bond? Well, let's find out. Has anybody else ever done that? Tax credit bonds, or TCBs, Remember those acronyms, TCBs, tax credit bonds, offer an alternative to municipal bonds. Offer an alternative to municipal bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what they did? They had these things known as municipal bonds or bonds from the city. And then what did they do? They all of a sudden created something new. Out of the blue, they just created something new. You, you see what I'm saying? Just out of the blue, they going to call it a tax credit bond. Of course, you can create your own bond. Give it whatever name you want. <sighs> Providing a tax credit or direct payment proportional dollar for dollar to the bond's face value in lieu of the tax exemption. Most tax credit bonds are de de designated for the specific purpose and were established as temporary tax provisions. See, established. They just created it out of thin air. Wham, bam, there you go. Alakazam. They just created it, and there you go. Tax credit bond. Ladies and gentlemen, if they can create a tax credit bond, it appears so can you. It's called a surety bond. Shh, don't tell nobody. Do your research. Now, tax credit bond. Wait, what is a tax credit bond? How do tax credit bonds work? Ladies and gentlemen, tax credit bonds, investors do not earn interest. So they're non-interest bearing securities, non-interest bearing, uh, bearing instruments. Instead, they qualify. Instead, they qualify for a federal tax credit for a certain number of years. They qualify for a federal tax credit for a certain number of years. Federal tax credit for a certain number of years. In this investment arrangement, 
the bond buyer gets only the principal back from the government entity that issued the certificate, which does not represent the investment benefit. Okay, there is an investment benefit, but they technically only get the principal back, so they get their money back when they do it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, do your research. Hey, there's a form. 8912, the Department of the Treasury Internal Revenue Service, credit to holders of tax credit bonds. Do your research, people. Do your research. This is not my research. This is for you to do. My job is to, hey, there it is right over there. My job is to point you in that direction so you can start heading there. Many of you, you're sitting around home watching soap operas and dramas and sitcoms and reality TV. You do a little bit of research and you get stumped because you don't know where to go. Have you noticed I haven't gone to any of those other websites? I've gone to see what the actual city and government said. No, we ain't finished. Uh Uh-uh, we ain't finished, y'all. We ain't finished. We're going to stop on this page and we're going to go to the next page that I already have open. Hey, look at that. Richmond County Sheriff Office. Richmond County Sheriff Office. This is Georgia. Hey, hey, Georgia, I, I got you I got you on the line. Georgia, could you hold on one second? All right, Georgia. Hey, Virginia, Georgia's on the line. Could you hold on while I talk to Georgia? All right, thanks, Virginia. Hey, New York, I got Georgia and Virginia on the line. Can you hold on while I talk to Georgia? And I ain't going to go through all 89, uh, what did Barack Obama say, 54 states? I ain't going to go through all 54 states, y'all. That, that, that was Barack Obama who talked about 54 different states in the United States. Barack Obama, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, I like Barack now. Didn't like him when he was uh, that idiot, but, you know, now he ain't so much an idiot. The administration of this process is performed by the bonding administration personnel of the sheriff's office. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know that the sheriffs accept bonds? Let me, let me let you know, in your state, see, Georgia law provides that the, sh- the sheriff, the authority to establish, publish, and regulate guidelines and rules of bonding arrested individuals. They created a statute. So if you're going to use these bonds to bond people out, ladies and gentlemen, you have to comply with the statute for your state. You have to do your research. Your bond has to meet the code. Many of you are not going to be able to do this because many of you don't understand bonds. My job is not to explain a bond to you. You can do your research. You start off with the basic information. What is a bond? Okay, that's your basic information. That's how you get started because that's how rumors get started. They started with the jealous people, and they get mad for something they had in somebody else's post. You, you know, they tell me that temptation is very hard to resist, and these wicked women, oh, man, they still persist. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something else about these bonds. Use of a professional bonding company. Now, pay attention, y'all, because y'all need to understand what goes on. If you use a professional bonding company, a professional bonding company, why not a private individual bonding company? They will charge you 12 to 15 percent of the total of the bond. That is the fee they charge for signing the bond, and you will not get this money back. Hell no. The bonding company can also require that you put up some type of collateral to cover the bond amount. The bond has to be backed by collateral. That's some information I will let you know. We already went over that, but you do need to focus on that. There are four bonding companies approved by the sheriffs, and this is them, ladies and gentlemen. Sign a property bond. Hoo-wee! Is it possible that my tax credits can be considered a property bond? Interesting, ain't it? Pay attention. To sign a property bond, you must own or be buying the property, and it must be located within Richmond County. When you come to sign the bond, you must bring that year's tax assessment papers so they make sure you understand this is only regarding real property then you got cash bond but ladies and gentlemen the idea is you must post bonds these are statutory requirements 
I need you guys to understand something because, oh, look at there. There it is right there. You transfer bonds from other counties, such as the federal government, i.e. the bonds created by the federal tax credit. Shh, don't tell nobody that that's even a possibility, okay? That you can not just have it from another county, but these bonds can come from another jurisdiction. Don't you jurist my diction, you ignorant mother. I, hey, don't go back to the, the Matrix, and don't you dare go back to Men in Black, and don't you dare go back to all that other stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, do not call this House Joint Resolution 192. Call it the Uniform Value of Coins Act. The uniform value of coin tax when dealing with this uniform value of coins and currencies of the United States Act. Right here. See it right here? Uniform value of the coins and currency of the United States or the uniform value of coins and currencies of the United States Act. Call it that. Don't call it HR 192 no more. I mean, you can, but I say don't do that. Because many of you don't know that the gold clause has been repealed. So you can't use it no more. Ah, uh, no, no, hold on now. You can use it. Pay attention. Whereas the hoarding or dealing in gold affects public interest and are therefore subject to proper regulation and restrictions. So we're not even talking about this. This part has been declared, pay attention, repealed. Okay. Whereas the existing emergency has closed that provision of obligations which purport to give the obligee the right to require payment in gold, pay attention, that right there has been repealed. But this part, a particular kind of coin or currency of the United States or in an amount of money the United States measures thereby obstructs the power of Congress to regulate the value of money in the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, they actually use the term money to regulate the value of money. Okay, so Congress, the regulating of the value of money, still part of the act. Hasn't gone nowhere. As we've highlighted since 2011, in a particular amount of money of the United States measures thereby. Ladies and gentlemen, particular kind of coin or currency or an amount of money of the United States measures thereby. Focus on that, because that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the uniform value of coins. Now, let's continue, shall we? It says they are inconsistent with the declared policies of the Congress. Who gives us about Congress's policy? Congress ain't got no authority. Congress don't have no, quote, unquote, Sovereign authority. It's the people who have the authority. Congress works for the people. At least that's what I'm told in a so-called ignorant democracy such as the one established by the United States of America. Anyway, to maintain at all, maintain at all times the equal power of every dollar coined or issued by the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what is construed as a dollar in the United States? Equal power of every dollar. Do you know what is equal in power to every dollar? Pay attention to maintain at all times the equal. Equal? That means they're the same. Power? Oh, that means it has some weight to it. Of every dollar. Every single one? Every single one. So let's talk about the equal power of every dollar. Dollar, so you can understand the premise for this video. Come on now, get on up here, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize. We we got to move around because of see approved June fifth, nineteen thirty three at four p.m. They didn't just stop there. They went into the next month. All right. Just so that you guys get it, I went up too far. Wait, as a matter of fact, let's do, there you go. Let's get you right, because going up and stop moving. Lord have mercy. 
It just moves when it want to move and don't do what it got to do. So we're going to move it back. Now, we have two policies here, ladies and gentlemen. We have the policy of the Congress and we have the policy of the public. Which one takes precedence? Well, uh, neither one of them, because neither one of them are president. Oh, Lord. Resolved by the Senate and the House of Representatives in the United States in Congress assembled, the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, of the Congress, that every provision contained in or made with respect to any obligation which purports to give the obligee you, no, not you, the creditor. Obligee is the creditor. You're the obligor. The right to require payment in gold. Hold on. Let's get rid of the in gold. I wish I had my, my uh, what's that PDF exchange? Because I could just get rid of the in gold. We already went over that. Or, now let's pay attention. A particular kind of coin or currency, or in an amount of money the United States measured thereby, is declared to be against public policy, and no such provision shall be contained in the made with respect to any obligation hereafter incurred. Every obligation here and after incurred, or here and before, here and after incurred, whether or not any provision, any such provision, any provision is contained therein or made with respect thereto, shall be discharged upon payment dollar for dollar in any, in any, in any, dollar for dollar in any, in any, dollar for dollar in any, in any, dollar for dollar in any coin or currency, which is at the time of payment is legal tender for public and private debt. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please understand, dollar for dollar is very important. So let's find out what coin and or currency means. The term coin or currency means coin or currency of the United States, including but not limited to Federal Reserve notes, circulating notes to the Federal Reserve Bank and National Bank Association. Ladies and gentlemen, you can become a national banking association, but we're telling people don't do that. Okay? What we're concerned with is all coins and currency in the United States, including Federal Reserve notes and circulating notes to the Federal Reserve Bank and National Bank Associated here and after incurred coin or issues shall be legal tender for all debts, public and private, public charges, uh, taxes, duties, dues, except that gold coins, when they reach a certain standard, you know, you can't test it. You know, MC Hammer time. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, give me one second. All right. Uh, roughly at about 2 o'clock every day for the last three days, I actually missed the meeting on, had a real bad headache. On Wednesday, missed the meeting yesterday with the company, and I'm about to go lay down after I do this video. That's how tired I am. Okay, again, when I say tired, let me go ahead and let you know. The word tired, when someone like me with a disease such as I have, when we say we're tired, we don't mean we're tired and we're ready to go to sleep. We mean we're exhausted. We mean that we are extremely fatigued. That's why I've been diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome, okay, which makes me susceptible to so-called COVID. All right, so what I want to bring to your attention, ladies and gentlemen, so that you don't misunderstand, because equal power for every dollar. Pay attention to that phrase. Look at that. Tax credits amount to a dollar for dollar. So look at the very first definition. It's Investopedia. A tax credit is an amount of money. Pay attention. A tax credit is an amount of money. Tax credits are money. Oh, my God. Did he just say tax credits are money? No, he didn't say it, Mama. The, the, the Investopedia said it. Hey, wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, excuse me. Ian? Yeah? Could you take that phrase that you're highlighting right now? And could you put that in case text to see if there's in any cases that say the same thing so we make sure Investopedia is not the only company that, you know, that has that so that we can, if we use that, if our tax credits are money dollar for dollar, we can pay off our mortgages and we can pay off our car notes and we can pay off our judgments and we can pay off everything and we won't ever have to worry about being broke ever again. I know that's, that's what I'm 
I'm trying to tell you guys. Well, could you just put it in there and let's see? I'm trying to do that now. Would you Would you let me do it and stop bugging me? I'm not bugging you. I just want you to get that mic. You know, if you keep it up, I'll turn the video off right now, and I won't get nowhere. I'll let you go look for it for yourself. Okay, now I told you to go outside, and I let you come back in, and you've been quiet for the most part. You better leave me alone. Look, tax credits are not a deduction, ladies and gentlemen. We've already determined that. The amount subtracted directly from one's total tax liability, dollar for dollar, as opposed to a deduction from gross income. Okay, we, we don't care about that part. In contrast, to the appropriations. The tax credit has been defined as an amount subtracted. We don't worry about that. Look, this is Black Law Dictionary, 1689. Okay, an amount subtracted directly from one's total tax liability, dollar for dollar, as opposed to a deduction from gross income. Okay, tax credit, and they're going to still give us the same definition. I don't want that. Um... You know what? As a matter of fact, I know what to do. We're going to go down to a couple of more, but I know exactly what to do because that's what they're doing. They're doing the, the same dictionary, Black Claw Dictionary. Whoa, look at that one. Oh, okay, 1473. I thought that was the year 1473. I'm like, wait, Black Claw wasn't written in 1473. They started after that, didn't they? Anyway, um. Is it amount of money shortened to credit? Uh, let's see. Black Claw Dictionary. I don't care about that. I thought we were going to be able to look for more and it was going to give us something different. But a tax credit is a direct. A tax credit is a direct. A tax credit is a direct dollar for dollar redu reduction in the amount of taxes owed by the taxpayer. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand that that's not true. That is true if you're looking at deductions. It is not true when you're looking at tax credits, which amounts to a refund, a carry over, a carry forward tax credit. Okay, watch this. Since they want to go deduction, no, nah, let's let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's do that right there. Okay, we're going to do a tax credit is an amount of money. Whew, Lord have mercy. I'm just so interested in the money part. I'm not interested in the, in the other part that they were trying to talk about because that wasn't going to help y'all. We're interested in tax credit being money. Then of course it's money, ladies and gentlemen. It's dollar for dollar. Pay attention. I, I'm sorry. No, hold on. Before no, no, hold on, because y'all not getting it. <sighs> tax credit is an amount of money. The reason why they could say it's an amount of money, ladies and gentlemen, because I've been trying to tell you. That's why we want the house joint resolution. Hold on, so that you guys get it. Come on, house joint. What you doing? Get on up here. Come on now. Get on up here. Keep going. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Anyway, um, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to pay attention because sometimes it's hard. Equal power of every dollar. Tax credits are dollars. They are money because there's equal power for every dollar. Oh, my goodness. I know. I know. Tax credit is a direct dollar for dollar. Okay, now, I should have put in carry forward or carry over, but because I just put in tax credit, and by the way, deductions and refundable tax credits, because remember, there are two types of tax credits. They're still dollar for dollar. Okay, the West Tax Law Dictionary in 1995 defines a tax credit as an allowance against the tax itself. Look at that. The dictionary defines it. Well, how, how does the law define it? The Indian tax court has stated that a tax credit is an allowance against the tax itself. I am sure that the, oh, Indiana, I am sure that Indiana meant something by that. 
As the government notes, a tax credit is a dollar-for-dollar dollar reduction in the taxpayer's liability. They're going to keep giving me that, so i got to put in the carry-forward and carry-overs, okay? So, hold on. You see, I put in the amount of money thing. So let's see if it's going to take us where we need to go. And while that's doing that, so that we ain't waiting. Investopedia, thank you. Uh, let's see. Dollar for dollar phrase, idiom, free law dictionary. It, You see, generally, it means that your income tax refunds are withheld as applied to involuntary payments. If your tax is offset, what happens? We're definitely going to talk about the offset. It's called the common law right of offset, ladies and gentlemen. Every single one of you have the right to common law right of offset. The bank says you owe. The government says you owe. If you can document, if you can document, such as, oh, I have an arbitration award that I've never gone to court on. I got an award from an arbitrator, and it's been over a year, and nobody's ever contested it. Well, guess what? There is no jurisdiction for any court or any law. As long as you can prove you notified the other party, no one has jurisdiction to overcome that credit. That is your credit. Sorry, we got to go down here because I got to go to Google. Vietnamese uh, web browser, ladies and gentlemen. That's why I use it. Because Vietnamese. I ain't got to worry about Google. Come on now. It ain't even doing it, y'all. It, it ain't even searching or nothing. It's frozen. Like 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 the tundra. You know, frozen. Like the, the movie, one and two. Frozen in time, y'all. And I don't know. Oh, there it is. About time. Ah, consequently, the common and ordinary understanding of credit and carry forward supports the idea that the carry forward is considered a credit for the given tax year. Actually, that's not true. Carry forward is not a credit for the given tax year. Carry forward is a credit for the pre previous tax year. It has been carried forward from a prior year to the taxable year. Okay? And it is... Uh, the idea that a credit and thus a credit allowed that that makes that's a court that's how they do stupid things under the act is encompassing term that includes carry forward credit is buttressed by the court's opinion in that case okay so here are your tax credit cases ladies and gentlemen furthermore it is apparent by the plain language of the statute that a carry forward at issue was a credit allowed under the section for the tax year. Okay? Remember, dollar for dollar that the credit carry forward may be claimed against the tax imposed under the Act, i.e., may be subtracted from one's tax liability, makes it apparent that the particular carry forward at issue. In this case, is intended as a function of credit against the liability imposed under that act. Okay, we're going to skip this one because that says the same thing. Consequently, the common and ordinary understanding of the credit and carry forward supports the idea that carry forward is combined with a credit for the tax year. That's the same one we saw. Tax credit given to years commonly understood to include carry forward. Ooh, we better include a tax credit given in years commonly understood to include carry forward liability of the qualified taxpayer for the tax year and forego the remaining 15% of the credit and any carry forward. Nobody wants to forego no carry forward. What's wrong with you? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, again, we came here to show that carry forward being dollar for dollar is a coin or currency of the United States. If it is dollar for dollar, it is a dollar. Pay attention. If it is dollar for dollar, it is a dollar. 
And because it's dollar for dollar in the United States, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Because it's dollar for dollar in the United States, in the United States, it is currency of the United States. A tax credit is a dollar for dollar reduction in the tax year, you and the tax income tax you owe. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, since we put that in there, pay attention. It is dollar for dollar. What is the value? Tax credits directly reduce the amount of taxes you owe, giving you a dollar for dollar. It is currency. Okay? Now, the reason why it's not just the taxes you owe, watch this. I know, I know. I, I don't feel like putting another the R there. Come on now. It, no, we ain't going to let it do that. I was going to let it correct itself, but I don't feel like it. I really don't, y'all. I don't feel like adding that. I mean, it should only be one R anyway. Okay? And, 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 and nobody needs that, that transgender stuff being brought in here. So come on now. No one knows for sure how much transferable tax credits cost the state, but it seems to be clear that the total was billions of dollars a year. Ladies and gentlemen, because you get to do transfer tax credits, it says, here's the first question, are they dollar for dollar? Let's find out. Tax credits, the dollar for dollar reduction in your income tax, for example, but the question is, are tax credits dollar? Oh, transferable tax credits the question. So if tax credits are, then transferable tax credits. Well, let's find out what ta transferable tax credit. The transferable tax credit program allows companies to make major capital investments to transfer certain tax credits that they have earned in the course of making the investment. Businesses must apply for pre-certification before they can make any investments in the project. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to do it, okay? This is Colorado, okay? What is a dollar tax deduction for dollars? Dollar for dollar is what it's saying. Tax credits directly reduce the amount of tax you owe, giving you a dollar for dollar, dollar for dollar money, U.S. currency, dollar for dollar. It is U.S. currency. Just want to make sure you guys understand that. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do this final one, and then I'm going to let you guys go email me or text me because I am, I'm only bringing this information to your attention. Like I said, I just thought about it for the first time on Wednesday, okay? No, as a matter of fact, we have to do this. Oh, come on now. My computer is just too much going on in the background. Okay. All right. God, it ain't going to let me uh, do it without this, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Tax credit. Oh. Uh, we're going to put tax credit, transferable tax credit, F-O-R-M. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to do this one right here, forms of authority. I can always correct that. The lotto, the lottery, the lot. Anyway, transferable state tax. <laughs> oh, I want need some transferable tax, these lady. Notice of intent, Department of Louisiana Revenue. Oh, look at that, credits, IRS.gov. The error was in one of the following computation of the credits on the form 2441. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that form 2441. Transfer the amount of your tax return. Let's go to that form, okay? I'm going to go to that form because the IRS highlighted that form. And so that's how we do our research, ladies and gentlemen. That's how we do our research. We find the forms when we do the research. Corporation business tax credit and incentives. So we're talking about transferring of tax credits. So look, urban transit hub tax credits. 
These are all of the different states, ladies and gentlemen. This is all they have their own form. So take their form. This is misery. Misery. The, the state of misery. Take their form. Yeah, I said it. Yes, I said it, Kenny. I said it. Misery. Sorry. Somebody who lives in misery. <laughs> Tax credits and deductions for individual taxpayers. We don't care about that. We're looking for the template. Misery is one of those. You're going to have to really use your PDF exchange to modify that piece of junk. Okay? But this is somebody letting you know. Ladies and gentlemen, if you transfer the tax credits, there are so many different things. you And see, we don't want the child-dependent ex expenses. We don't want that. But we want the tax credit. So let's see if this form, and somebody did a video, but let's see if this form did anything other than permit just child transfer. And then you'll have to find the other forms that talk about it as well, because this is not the only one. Remember, I told you you want to use the templates for transferring of tax credits. It's just a simple document. It's not complicated. Okay? People. I hope y'all are paying attention. It's dollar for dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Do you understand the significance of that? Has anybody ever told you about the dollar for dollar in any coin or currency of the United States? It's money. Tax credits are money because they are dollars. Shh. Don't tell nobody that. Nobody's ever, ever brought that to the public's attention that tax credits are dollars. But the banks know this. That's why they file the paperwork they do. The government and the IRS know this. That's why there's very little information out there for you to find. That's why you have people like me. Okay? That's right. I said it. That's why you have people like me. Because I'm here to point you in a direction. I'm not going to do the staple singers. I'm not going to take you there. I'm just going to point you in that direction. Oh, there's them go. No, right over there. There's them go. Okay? That's what I'm going to do. That's what you're going to get from me is, oh, mama, that boy pointing again. You call me a boy again and see what happens. All right? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I do. So, see, this is child independent care expenses. So, oh, I got a better idea. Watch this. I'm doing this for y'all. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can even use your tax credits to pay for your tuition for college. Okay, so watch this. We can go to the IRS. Where's my search bar? Watch this. T R A. Uh, 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 uh. I just put transferable tax credits, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what we get. Then I'm going to end the video because there's a fly in here, and I need to go and uh, have him singing taps for eternity because he gone. Okay, we don't care about no railroad retirement. Uh, and they put that in Spanish, ladies and gentlemen. Joint directives providing instructions for large businesses and international and Examiners on the credibility of two French social taxes. Contrib Nobody cares about that. Tax exempt bond notice. Issued guidance regarding proposed procedural changes. Notice also requests public comment. Blah, 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 blah. Don't care about that. That's not giving me the tax phone. Okay. And I said transferable tax credit. And that was the. Oh, it didn't do the whole thing. Okay. Yeah, it took out the whole transferable stupid computers. Blame it on Microsoft and Google. Can't forget Google. Ladies and gentlemen, my I, I said the uh, the word and, and then I used that other G word afterwards, and so the system actually thought I was saying, hey, Google, you know, and anyway. Proposed regulations for charitable contribution, state and local tax credits. 
okay, we're not doing state tax credits, we're not doing local tax credits, we're doing federal tax credits. Audit technique guide for Section 48 and 48B, advanced coal and class, no, not, uh, tax information for parents, tax scams, consumer alerts, nope. Uh, frequently asked questions, uh, that might help you. Individual tax matters, uh, but this is international. Uh, Form 706, certification of payment of foreign death tax, no. Gift tax study, no. Gift tax statistics, no. Let's do this. And what I'm going to suggest, if you all can find the forms, uh, you may send them to me. And I will take a look, and then I will let the next person know, because all I'm doing is showing you how to get there. Okay? See, non-resident alien estate tax study. Terms and concepts. Uh, estate tax study. Nobody cares about no tax study. Tax-exempt bonds. People get ready. Uh, offshore tax cheating remains. The Dirty Dozen, ooh, that's the IRS writing that, ladies and gentlemen. House Joint Ventures Without Finalized Agreements Operating History. Interesting. Well, we got some finalized agreements on these tax credits. Income Housing Tax Credit Organization Without Operating History. Income Housing Tax Credit Organization. Man, how do I become one of them? Hey, Colorado man sentenced to 83 months in prison for his role in a $72, $7.2 million biodiesel tax credit scheme. Biodiesel. And only when they are not government employees do they get sentences that high. Okay. Uh, there is a form here, 8302. Direct deposit on tax refund for millions and more, million dollars and more. For a million dollars or more. This is the direct deposit form. So, ladies and gentlemen. And then they have other forms. Hold on. These are for taxpayers filing form 1045, 1139, for a tax return other than a 1040. Okay? Because they want this to be for businesses. That's why it's a million dollars or more. Guarantee you the banks are definitely using this form or other similar forms. This is just me pointing you guys in the right direction. By the way, the music that's being played in the background is going directly in correlation with the waves. I cannot do it any better than what you see. Okay? I didn't make it that way. It's just the way it turned out when I chose this particular track to play in the background. So, ladies and gentlemen, what have we discussed today? Well, we discussed me and what I go through and how other people shouldn't be in my business. This is just for you to know. And then, you know what we discussed after that? We discussed individuals' ability to use their tax credits and to tell people that there's a possibility that they, if they create the correct shorty bond in advance, back it up with collateral, their tax credits, when they do it right, <coughs> excuse me, they can then utilize that and have that in case of an emergency to post on should something stupid happen. Okay? Because that's all the law wants. And it is dollar for dollar. So you will have to explain that it is dollar for dollar, a coin or currency of the United States. And you can use the establishing... I got to go back to it. I'm sorry. I got to get the correct language because that's the only way it's going to be. It can't be no other way. Not that one. We're going here. Okay. Y'all, all of y'all, y'all need to know that this act by Congress lets you know the uniform value of coins and currencies of the United States Act. That's what I would call it. And it was approved June 5th, 1933. Okay, not this one that they repealed. We don't care about that one. This was done on the same day. Actually, they were talking about they approved something on March 3rd of that same year, and it's no more. Okay, so whatever. Ladies and gentlemen, 
June 5th, 1933 is when this act was written. Call it Uniform Value of the Coins and Currency of the United States Act. Don't put it in quotes because we're not quoting it directly. We're just talking about uniform value, dollar for dollar. Then you highlight that tax credits are dollar for dollar. That means they are dollars, which means they are to be used to pay. They are the same as cash. They are dollar for dollar. Okay? But most of you are going to have to do the transfer of the credits so that they will be dollar for dollar. And if it's dollar for dollar, you should be able to use that to pay off your mortgages. Pay attention to what I just said because many of you are not focusing on what's being said. You should be able to pay off your mortgages. You should be able to pay off your car notes. And if anybody gives you a problem, then what you do is you start a miscellaneous filing. Don't file no stupid lawsuit. File a miscellaneous filing and get a declaratory judgment. Having the court rule against you that it is not money, that it is not a dollar, that it is not equal to a dollar, and that what you did, they cannot take to the treasury window under 12 U.S.C. 411 and receive the lawful money, credit, from the government. Yes, I just gave you guys a way to finally discharge all of your debt and keep your butts out of jail. Dollar for dollar. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the offset. It's called the common law right of offset. Look up the common law right of offset. I'm sorry, I don't have the time to follow this, ladies and gentlemen. Some of you are going to take this. You've got your own companies and everything. You're going to add this to what you're doing, and you're going you're gonna to do fairly well. And you're going to keep the information to yourself, and you're not going to tell me anything. Although you got the idea from me, and you got other ideas from me, you're going to keep the information to yourself because you're greedy and you're selfish. And you are sons of, well, you know. I'm saying this because there are so many people I talk to who have established businesses who have made thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars. Some people have made hundreds of thousands of dollars with the information that they've gotten from my channel for free. And they don't share anything with me so that I can help you guys out because they are greedy. They are selfish. And I'm sorry, everybody reaps what they sow. And I, I don't wish bad on anybody, but I do wish them everything they got coming to them because they deserve it. Okay, just like the guy who they caught and gave 80-some years to because of greed. Because of greed, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the House Joint Resolution that he they call 192, um, this is not that other junk. This is actually the statute at large. So technically, this is the joint resolution. Okay, but you know what? I just realized we're calling it the wrong thing. This is not... Uh, the Senate is not called the House, ladies and gentlemen. You hear that beeping? Because I'm at 29 votes. Sorry, let me get on over here so I can see it because it's daytime. Yeah, it reads 29 volts, but it's still charging the full. But that beeping is letting me know that my battery is almost fully charged. Okay? As a matter of fact, it's so fully charged that it's not putting out any amps at this time because all of it is coming from the solar. Yay! Okay, let me get back to you guys, ladies and gentlemen. As I said, there are a lot of people out there who have accomplished a lot by listening to my video, the information they're getting from me. I believe it will probably be the next video that I do that I will explain to you guys where I'm getting the information from so that you'll know. And yes, I know that there is, I've not heard anybody else like me. All of my life, I've looked for somebody else like me. Again, pay attention. Does everybody have a twin? That's what that was written about, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't know, does everybody have a twin, it's online. Okay, this is the final thing I'm going to show you all, and then I'm going to get on with my business. Does everybody And I'm putting that in quotations. You know why? 
because if I don't put it in quotations, they'll give me everything but what we need. Now, I know it's in the PDF section of our website. Okay, I do know that. But I put this up online ooh, a long time ago. I Does everybody have a twin? I think I wrote this. It, it had to be 1999 or something. But it was the truth, the tooth. Okay. Uh, don't care about that. I'm looking for the actual document. And so I have to, that's why I put it in parentheses so it wouldn't give me all that junk. So we go here. And then this will be it. Then let you guys get back to your lives. Hey, did I spell something else wrong? Because I've been going, oh, I didn't put the E at, on half. Uh, yeah, and see, they thought it was a question, and nobody asked put a question mark. I put it in quotation. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to find that document. It is on our website, but I did, and the document does exist. And the reason why we're not going to find it is because I didn't put the half to half. Okay, so let me get my E. And that's me being typing so fast and trying to get things done. Oh, it didn't get my quotation. That's what the issue is. Lord have mercy. See, that's that's that frugal thing. How stupid they be. They can't help it. Yeah, they can, but they can't help it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Friday. This is the end of October, October 29th. And I just want to say it has been a long month. But if you take a look at the videos... Ladies and gentlemen, I'll say it again. If you take a look at the videos that have been done this month, you have been given everything you need to discharge your debt. Okay? You have been given everything you need to discharge your debt. Wait, hold on. We're going to do it this way. Got one more, one more way to look it up. Dot... W, no, uh oh, D O C X. Yeah, we'll do it that way. We'll do D O C X because I think it is in D O C X. Yeah, we'll do you this way. But anyway, it's on the website. If you guys are interested, you can go look it up. Oh no, you ain't nobody asking for no mozzarella, uh, mozzarella. Man, Lord have mercy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, I got to go because, like I said, I'm tired. And But again, the reason why I did this document, does everybody have a twin? Because I realized that when it comes to being unique, I may not be the very best at everything. May not be the number one at everything. I may not be that H-N-I-C of everything. But you want to know what I tell you I am? I am the best me that I can be, and there will never ever be another one like me. I've been saying that since I was seven years old. I am the best me. Nobody told me that. I knew that from the time I was seven years old. I never forgot what I was told. It was the best advice that I ever had, and it came from a wise zero daddy. He said, sit down, punk. I want to talk to you. Don't say a word until I'm through. It's a time to laugh, a time to cry, a time to live, a time to die, a time to break, a time to chip, a time to act like, why am I through you? Sorry, rapid delight. Big hate. Uh, and so, ladies and gentlemen, because I am the best me that I can be and that there will never be another one like me, I understand that there is uniqueness to me. Now, can everybody say that? No, because not everybody aspires to be unique. So many people in this world want to be like someone else. So many people want to emulate someone else. Nobody wants to be the individual anymore. Now, we have a lot of selfish, ignorant individuals out there who want to be individuals, but they're not trying to be unique. They're trying to be selfish. Ladies and gentlemen, I share what I have. Go ahead, look at my life. I don't hide nothing from people. I share what I have. I share the knowledge I have. It's just some people think that I owe them individually something. No, I don't. I owe the people 
not of the United States, no, the people of this planet that I live on. I owe them. Look, I tell you all, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I'm a follower of what Jesus says. Go, therefore, and make disciples. It says, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love among yourselves. But in order for us to love ourselves, we have to love others. So my job is to not be selfish because love doesn't understand selfishness. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you, I don't understand selfishness, nor do I understand selfish people. That's why they irritate me so much because I can't understand the concept of somebody wanting to keep something all to themselves. We have so much in our history of what happens to people who keep things to themselves. A lot of people have taken certain ideas to their grave, not understanding that they weren't secrets. They perceive them as secrets, but they're not secrets. Why be that way? Okay? I'm pointing you in a direction. I'm telling you I don't have time to go in that direction, but I know I've given you more information in the last two videos, last three videos, sorry, than you've had prior to that, that it's added so much clarity to so many different things. Who else would tell you that a tax credit being dollar for dollar is exactly what Congress meant when they said that they were making every dollar equal in value? Every dollar equal in value. Who else would tell you that? And then who else would talk to you about tax credits? Do you know that since I started doing videos in March of this year on tax credits, I've seen a ton of other videos being done on tax credits. I've seen people adding tax credits to their program that they're doing for people. Now, I, no, 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 no. I told people, take what I am telling you and make it your own. You heard me say that. The only problem is, ladies and gentlemen, and I don't ask them for it. I never have. But they do not attribute any credit to the man who was utilized to help them gain this information. They've taken the credit for themselves. They have made it seem like they came up with this stuff all by themselves. Now, mind you, I don't come up with this stuff by myself. I attribute everything I have to the God I serve. Okay? But I've gone on YouTube. You've seen. I put the stuff in, and I don't see anybody showing you the law. don't see anybody showing you this information. I don't see it at all. All right, look, guys, I got to go. I do hope everything continues to go well with all of you. I'm going to go have a coke and a smile. But just remember, everything you need to know of discharging your debt, everything you need to know, you can start with this video and the previous one. And that's it. I, that It will take you where you need to go. All right, I got to go, ladies and gentlemen. Take care of yourselves. Stay out of trouble. If you're going to do the research, don't rely on somebody's information. Do your own research. Make sure of it. Do not settle for your opinion of what you think. Do the scientific method. Experiment, experiment. Result, result. Experiment, experiment. Result, result. Ah, final result. Okay? Got to go. Take care, all right? Adios, ladies and gentlemen.